improvising over the secondary dominant. So what's in this video? Now first we'll see what the dominant chord really is and then I will explain the ins and outs of the secondary dominant. Now we'll see some examples of songs that use the secondary dominant and then I will tell you about the beautiful deceptive cadence using those secondary dominants. And you'll be learning something about the diminished chord as a secondary dominant. And we will see that tritone substitutions work like a charm too for secondary dominance. And at the end of this video, we'll dive a little bit deeper and look at the back cycle technique, which is a staple in jazz and a great tool for pop and rock. Now in a diatonic scale, we can build a chord on each of the seven notes of the scale. In a major scale, we have these chords. And in a minor scale, we have these chords. Now every musical journey made with such a skill often begins and always ends at the first chord of the skill, which is called the tonic. It sounds and it feels like home. Every other chord in the skill, uh, then the tonic creates tension and is used for getting back to the tonic. The most tension is the major chord that is located on the fifth note of the scale and is called the dominant or the dominant chord. It is always major. The minor fifth degree in a minor scale is often changed to major. Now you can find it by playing a power chord for instance. Also the note in the same fret but one string lower is the fifth from the scale. Or you can count seven frets up or five frets down. Anyway, in C major the G major chord is the dominant chord. And when you hear this chord, your ears are begging for the tonic. The 5-1 relation has the strongest resolution in music, and especially when the dominant chord is a 7th chord, the dominant 7th chord. It is built from a root, a major 3rd, a 5th, and a minor 7th degree. Strong resolution is caused by the strong 5-1 relationship between the root notes of both chords. Another reason is the appearance of a very unstable tritone in the dominant 7th chord between the 3rd and minor 7th of the chord. It's a dissonant diminished 5th interval that wants to resolve to the root and 3rd of the tonic chord. But even without that minor 7th and thus without the tritone interval, the major triad on the 5th degree still pulls the music back to the tonic. Now we have seen that the chord on the 5th degree is the dominant chord and has the strongest resolution to the tonic. And we call this chord the primary dominant. So let's take a look at the G major scale. Now when we build chords on each scale degree, we see a G major, A minor, B minor, C major, D major, E minor and F sharp diminished chord. The chords that belong to a key or scale we call diatonic chords. Now let's take a look at this interesting progression in the key of G major that is inspired by an acoustic song Het regent zonnestralen by the Dutch band Agda in the Munich. And it means it rains sunbeams. Anyway, it sounds like this. So every chord of the progression is diatonic except for the B dominant 7th chord because in G major we have a B minor 7th chord on the 3rd degree. So the B dominant 7th chord doesn't belong to the G major key. But it sounds special. As you could hear it adds color to the progression and maybe makes it a little more interesting to listen to. The progression sounded logical, but how is that possible with such an odd duck? Well, it is because the B dominant 7th chord is the dominant chord for the next E minor chord. The note B is the 5th note in the E minor scale, which makes B major the dominant for E minor. The B dominant 7th chord pulls the music with strength to the E minor chord. It is as if the E minor chord is very briefly the tonic instead of the G major chord, which is the real tonic. Now we could say that the E minor chord has been briefly tonicized. So, and this is important, the B7 chord is the dominant for the 6th degree in G major. And this is what we call a secondary dominant. 
B dominant 7 is the secondary dominant for E minor in the key of G major. We can say that it is the 5 of 6, and it can be notated in these two ways. Now, almost every scale degree other than the tonic can have such a secondary dominant. We just have to find the fifth note of the chord and build a major or dominant 7 chord on that fifth degree. A special case is the diminished chord in, uh, in a diatonic scale. The secondary dominant for the diminished 7th degree does exist, but it has no use, since the diminished chord can't be tonicized. Such an unstable and dissonant chord can never give us a feeling of resolution or homecoming. So only the 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th and 6th degree in a major scale can have a secondary dominant. And in the minor scale, the diminished chord lies on the second degree. So in a minor scale, the only chords with secondary dominance are the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh degree. We'll take the C major scale as an example. In the key of C major, the fifth degree is a G dominant seven chord and is the primary dominant for the tonic. That's obvious, right? Now for the secondary dominance. In the key of C major, we'll have uh, a D minor chord on the second degree. In the D minor scale, the fifth degree is the note A. That makes A dominant 7 the primary dominant chord for the tonic D minor. But when the D minor is not the tonic and just one of the other chords, like in the key of C major, then the A dominant 7 chord is the secondary dominant for D minor. So instead of playing C, A minor, D minor, G, we'll now use the secondary dominant A dominant 7 for the D minor chord. And we'll play C, A dominant 7, D minor, G. And in the key of C major, the A dominant 7 chord is the 5 of 2. Well, that's easy, right? Now the third degree in C major is the E minor chord. And in the E minor scale, the fifth degree is the note B. That makes B dominant 7 the primary dominant chord for the tonic E minor. But when E minor is not the tonic, like in the key of C major, then the B dominant 7 chord is the secondary dominant for E minor. Instead of playing C, A minor, E minor, G, we'll use the B dominant 7 chord as a secondary dominant for E minor and play C, B dominant 7, E minor, and G. In the key of C major, the B dominant 7 chord is the 5 of 3. <laughs> degree in C major is the F major chord. In the F major scale, the C dominant 7 chord is the primary dominant for the F major chord. But when the F major chord is not the tonic chord and just one of the other chords, like in the key of C major, then C7 is the secondary dominant for F major. And by the way, something remarkable is happening here because the tonic of the main key, the C major chord, is now transformed into a dominant chord and serves as a secondary dominant for the fourth degree. So, in the key of C major, the C dominant 7 chord is the 5 of 4. Now, I think you get the picture, right? So, let's quickly find the secondary dominance for the remaining two chords. The 5th degree in C major is a G major chord, and the dominant for G major is the D dominant 7 chord. So, in the key of C major, the D dominant 7 chord is the secondary dominant for the G major chord. The 5 of 5. The 6th degree in C major is the A minor chord, and the dominant for A minor is E dominant 7. So in the key of C major, the E dominant 7 chord is the secondary dominant for the A minor chord, the 5 of 6. Now this is how you find the secondary dominant. Now let's take a look at some popular songs that use secondary dominance. Well, we'll start off with a classic. In the song Big Girls Don't Cry, written in the key of G major, composer Bob Gaudio of the Four Seasons uses the E dominant 7 chord as a secondary dominant for the A minor chord. A minor is the second degree in G major. The note E is the fifth note in the A minor scale, and that makes E dominant 7 the dominant for A minor. In G major, the E dominant 7 chord is the 5 of 2, and it sounds like this. The author of the song Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen, uh, that is in the key of E flat major at this stage uh, of the song, Freddie Mercury used a secondary dominant D major for the third degree G minor in the key of E flat. Now D major is not a part of the E flat major key, 
Instead, it is a 5 of 3, the secondary dominant for the 3rd degree G minor in the key of E flat major. And more interesting uh, things happen here, by the way, but I will explain that later in the video. It sounds like this. John Lennon and Paul McCartney used secondary dominance in lots of their songs, uh, like for instance in the song Hey Jude. Now the song is an F major, and the tonic F major 7 is changed to an F dominant 7 chord uh, that then serves as a secondary dominant for the 4th degree in B flat major, which is the first chord of the chorus that follows. The F dominant 7 chord is the 5th degree and dominant chord in the B flat major scale. However, in the key of F major, which is the key of this song, F dominant 7 is the 5 of 4, and it sounds like this. The secondary dominant for the primary dominant is probably the most used uh, secondary dominant chord. It is the 5 of 5, and for instance used uh, by Billy Joel for his song Piano Man. The key is C major and the secondary dominant is the D dominant 7 chord for the dominant G7 chord that leads to the G major chord. In G major, the 5th degree is a D major chord. So the D dominant 7 chord is the dominant for the G major chord. But in the key of C major, the D dominant 7 chord is the 5 of 5. Billie Eilish uses the 5 of 6 throughout her song Happier Than Ever in the key of C major. Now, the E dominant 7 chord is the secondary dominant of A minor. And she also uses the half diminished 2nd degree D minor 7 flat 5 that is borrowed from the C minor scale. It is a beautiful melody that has some heartbreaking lyrics about the deceptive love of a teenage girl. And it sounds something like this. <laughs> Remarkable and extensive used alternative for the 5 of 6 is when the secondary dominant doesn't resolve to the expected 6th degree, but instead resolves to the 4 chord of the key of the progression. Now in the key of G major, the chord on the 6th degree is an E minor chord. The secondary dominant for this E minor chord is the B dominant 7 chord. In this alternative cadence, the B dominant 7 chord does not resolve as expected, but instead it resolves to the 4th degree in G major. It is a surprising change in the progression. And when a cadence doesn't lead to what is expected by the listener, then we'll speak of a so-called deceptive cadence. It happens also in the song Creep by Radiohead, for instance. The song is in the key of G major and the B major chord is the secondary dominant for the E minor chord. In any normal situation, the B major chord would resolve to that E minor chord because B major is the dominant of E minor. It would have been the 5 of 6, but now the B major chord resolves to C major, which is the 4th chord of the G major scale. And this is unexpected and it sounds very different and refreshing. It is a perfect example of a deceptive cadence. Now the diminished chord has the same qualities as a dominant chord regarding to the resolution to another chord. This means that the diminished 7 chord can be a secondary dominant too. And if we compare the two chord structures, then we'll see an overlap uh, of the intervals. 
the upper structure of the G dominant 7 chord with the notes G, B, D and F is uh, a diminished triad, B, G, F. And this means that the G dominant 7 chord has three notes in common with the B diminished 7 chord that is built from the notes B, D, F and A flat. Now, both chords together form a G dominant 7 flat 9 chord, which is uh, a so-called altered dominant chord and has a very strong resolution to the tonic C major 7. All this means that we can substitute any dominant chord for a diminished chord built on the third of the dominant chord, G7 and B diminished 7 for instance. The diminished chord lies a half step or a semitone below the tonicized chord. This is an example of the use of such a diminished chord. The D sharp diminished 7 chord serves as the secondary dominant for the E minor chord. It is the upper structure of the B dominant 7 flat 9 chord, which is the traditional secondary dominant for E minor. So we can say that the diminished chord is a rootless dominant 7 flat 9 chord. We can revisit the outro of Bohemian Rhapsody, which is in the key of E flat, and see that Freddie Mercury uses the diminished secondary dominant for the sixth degree C minor, namely the B diminished seventh chord. The note B is a semitone lower than the root of the C minor chord. Now we can also use the diminished chord as a deceptive cadence. In this progression, in C major, the D sharp diminished seventh chord should resolve a half step up to E minor the 5 of 3. But if we replace the E minor 7 chord with, for instance, a D minor 7 chord, then we have created a very nice deceptive cadence, like this. Now, if you are familiar with the tritone substitution that I covered in another tutorial, then you can use this too as a secondary dominant. Short, a tritone substitution is a substitution of the primary dominant chord by another dominant chord that lies a tritone away from that primary dominant chord. So we can substitute the G dominant 7 chord with the D flat dominant 7 chord to create an equally strong but different sounding resolution to the tonic. It introduces the flat 5, the D flat, and the flat 9, A flat, which makes it a true altered sound. And it sounds like this. Now, we can apply this to the secondary dominance too. Let's revisit the classic Big Girls Don't Cry, which is in the key of G major. The secondary dominant is the E dominant uh, 7 chord, which is the 5 of 2. And we can use the tritone substitution of the E dominant 7 chord, which is B flat 7. And the progression sounds still recognizable, but with a slight variation, like this. So using the tritone substitution as a secondary dominant is a great way to enhance a progression that you have already enhanced with a secondary dominant. It's the enhancement of the enhancement, so to speak. Errant nonsense. Now when we look at the circle of fifths, then we'll see counterclockwise a 5-1 relation between each consecutive note. If you make dominant chords of each note, then we'll create an endless chain of dominants. And we can use this to enhance any progression or improvisation. Say we have a 4 bar lasting E minor 7 chord in the key of G major. Instead of just playing that one chord, we can now determine the secondary dominant for the E minor 7 chord, which is the B dominant 7 chord. One step back in the circle of fifths. And we'll use that chord to quickly change to B7 on a weak beat, like this. But the B7 chord has a secondary dominant too, 
which is another step back in the circle of fifths. It is the F sharp dominant seven chord. Now, now we can add both F sharp dominant seven and B dominant seven uh, for a quick change like this. Now this technique is called back cycling and it is a staple in jazz. You literally cycle backwards through the circle of fifths to find chords that are all secondary dominants of each other. Now you can go wild with this by cycling back even further and add more five of fives. Uh, the song uh, Mr. Sandman, for instance, by Chet Atkins uses such a chain of dominance. The key is A major and the second chord in the verse, the G sharp dominant seven chord, is the start of a back cycle progression. G sharp dominant seven for C sharp, C sharp for F sharp, F sharp for B, B for E and E for A. And this creates a very strong progression with tons of gravity. <laughs> Now there are a lot of more possibilities with backcycling like using diminished secondary dominants and tritone substitutions that work super too. But that's maybe for another tutorial. So we've seen that the secondary dominant adds color and strength to the progression by tonicizing another chord and the tonic in the same progression. We've also seen different ways to use a secondary dominant by using a deceptive cadence for instance. Or using a diminished chord instead of a dominant 7 chord using the tritone substitution or apply back cycling. In any case, enough to play around with. In the next tutorial, I'll show you what skills and arpeggios and other means you can use to improvise over secondary dominance, because that's fun too. For now, I hope this was crystal clear. So go out there and own that secondary dominant like a boss. I hope to see you next time and live long and prosper. Yeah, should do that. I mean, live long and prosper, both things. So what are you waiting for? What am I waiting for? <laughs>